So in this presentation, I will try to to present you a work in which we are uh, interested in uh, reproducing uh, directionality and size effect that are induced by the microstructure of a material on crack propagation. And for this, we use gradient elasticity as a continuum model. Okay, so I think I don't have to convince you that uh, we have many examples in the experimental side which shows uh, early stage of crack propagation for which you have a strong interaction between uh, a crack and the microstructure and that you can have uh, crack passes that are strongly influenced by the microstructure. So you have many examples in the literature. So this is the reason why we first choose to work on model materials that we obtain by uh, 3D printing with a 3D printer that uses uh, a polymer-based material. And so the idea is to work with this kind of material and to make fractured uh, tests on this material to see uh, in a perfect uh, case how uh, the microstructure influences the crack propagation. So we are first interested in the microscopic continuum that we have to use to describe the behavior of this kind of material. And we are indeed interested in size effect and also an isotropy. And uh, for failure, we are also interested in the effect of the size of the unit cell and also the anisotropy that can uh, be even stronger for failure than uh, the anisotropy that we have for elasticity. Okay, so in a previous work, we performed uh, experiment in such a specimen. Uh, so we take picture of the experiment with a high resolution camera uh, that give us the opportunity to measure the displacement field by the IC at two different scales. Basically, we build two meshes for two scales. The first one is the microscopic scale for which we have one node for each unit cell and another one is the microscopic scale for which we mesh each unit cell of the, of the structure. With this kind of meshes we can measure the displacement field, field both at the scale of the specimen like this and at the scale of the unit cell. And from these two uh, displacement field analysis we were able to analyze uh, how uh, we have to transfer the kinematic variables from the microscopic scale to the macroscopic one. And for this uh, material, the conclusion was that uh, we have to transfer uh, not only uh, the strain tensor from the macroscopic scale to the microscopic one, but also the gradient of strain. And that the model that we have to use at the macroscopic scale as a continuum is gradient elasticity. So we have also developed uh, a finite element updating technique so that we can identify the, the, the elastic property of this kind of product. So the next question now is that how failure developed in such material? We have some uh, experimental evidence that uh, in such material failures always occurs at the corners of the unit cell, like in this uh, case of hexagonal uh, cells or in this one with uh, square cells. So you can see that we always have uh, crack going from one corner to the, another one. So the idea is to say that um, uh, we have a nucleation point which will be one of these corners and due to periodicity of the material then we can define some pre predefined uh, crack orientation that will not be arbitrary and so we have only a, a, a finite number of uh, of orientations that the crack can follow. So these orientations are the red line uh, in these uh, pictures. So basically for this structure here, you can see that you, you only have two angles, okay? And so uh, now we have developed a numerical uh, algorithm in order to use uh, this uh, kind of uh, fracture criteria at the microscope is clear. So the idea is to use uh, the extended finite element for gradient elasticity. So we have developed uh, a numerical tool with, in which we implemented uh, XFEM with uh, C1 continuous finite element in order to be able to use gradient elasticity as a macroscopic continuum. And for um, uh, crack initiation and growth, we have an extension of uh, GCTA method in order to be able to compute the energy release rate for gradient elasticity. I will not talk about this uh, step uh, today, 
but I will talk uh, more about uh, how we can transfer now the tip estimate of the strain and also the gradient of strain to the limit <coughs> cell and how from this quantity we can decide which slip system is activated. So uh, we need uh, an estimate of uh, the strain and the gradient of strain at crack tip. And from these two uh, estimates, then we will load a unit cell like this one with homogeneous uh, boundary condition uh, deriving from these microscopic quantities. And then we can uh, compute the generalized stress intensity factors at each corner of the unit cell so that we can find the corner at which the generalized stress intensity factor is the highest and set the nucleation point. Then we are looking uh, to the homologous point of this point to decide what is uh, the selective crack orientation. Okay. So now the question is how can I get robust estimate of these quantities that are so local but also somehow non-local because uh, we want to have a measure of these uh, quantities at the scale of the unit cell which is not infinitely small. In fact. So you can find in the literature usual uh, non-local estimates of, for example, stress and so But in the case of gradient elasticity, we expect that at the crack tip, the strain is vanishing, but the gradient of strain is singular. This means that uh, we have to, to really robustly estimate these two quantities in order to have, uh, weight uh, carefully the uh, um, our strain is global strain and gradient of time strain and are balancing. Okay? So our idea was to uh, the first assumption is that uh, the displacement is an homogeneous function of the distance to the crack tip and to the crack angle. And then by averaging along air and theta, then we can have a semi-analytical estimate of the displacement close to the crack tip. And from this semi-analytical estimate, then we can average it uh, in uh, over a uh, circle of radius, uh, which is <coughs> equal to the unit cell uh, uh, length. And for example, for uh, first gradient elasticity, we have an exponent here which is lower than one, meaning that the gradient is singular like this, and the, the strain is singular, and also the gradient uh, of strain is even singular. But as soon as you go to gradient elasticity, then you cancel the, the, the singularity, and you have um, uh, a strain which is uh, zero at the crack tip, but a gradient of strain which is uh, singular at the crack tip. So you can see that depending on the distance from the crack tip at which you look at these two quantities, then you can strongly influence the result, meaning that if you are too close to the crack tip, you have uh, uh, the gradient of strain is dominating, whereas if you are too far from the crack tip, then the strain is dominating. Okay, so we have a numerical setup like this. It's just a rectangle with uh, a crack here. And we test this kind of unit cell because it has the strongest anisotropy. And we will vary the unit cell size and also uh, the orientation uh, of the unit cell with respect to the crack. And uh, for this example, so alpha equals 90 degrees, then we are able to capture this kind of uh, crack pass, which is almost uh, linear, and which well agree with uh, the experiment we perform in the, in the for the same uh, unit cell orientation. And you see that we always activate uh, this uh, crack orientation. This one is never activated in this case. And so we can, of course, vary continuously alpha in the numerical uh, simulation. And we can see that we have almost a continuous evolution of the crack uh, pass angle with respect to the, the orientation of the unit cell. And we will try for alpha equal to zero and alpha equal to 90 degrees, the two experimental cases that we have uh, performed. OK. So uh, how does it work in, in practice? So the idea is that uh, you have constitutive anisot anisotropy in such material. And uh, this anisotropy strongly influences uh, the distribution of strain uh, in the sample. 
because basically uh, your geometry gives you the stress field, and then depending of your uh, anisotropy uh, for elasticity, then you get different strain fields. And uh, so you have a failure and isotropy also, which is called directionality, which gives you only a finite number of slip systems that you can activate. And indeed, for a small unit cell, then you have a, a singularity and a predominant uh, role for the strain. Mm -hmm. So it gives you something like this. You, so strain is singular, so you've got uh, also, of course. But everything is dominated by the singularity of strain and the correct but once you increase the unit cell size, then you, you, you cancel the singularity of the strain and the quack tip, and you give uh, the opportunity to the gradient of the strain to play a role into uh, the selection of the, of the sleep system. So we play a little bit with the unit cell uh, size in the medical simulation, and we get a strong influence of uh, this parameter on the, on the results, meaning that, uh, so if, you start from this one, then you increase the unit cell size by 10, and you get this track trajectory. And you, if you increase it by a factor of 100, then you get a straight track pass. So, which shows that the model is able to uh, account for the effect of uh, the microstructure of the material uh, <coughs> on the crack uh, trajectory. So, we have developed. Uh, an, an experimental setup in order to validate uh, the continuum that we have to use at the micro scale by analyzing the unit cell deformation and making the link between the microscopic scale and the microscopic one. And we have also developed uh, a strategy for identifying the gradient elasticity constitutive operator. And then we propose a model uh, that accounts for. Uh, the, the, the directionality effect and also for the size effect uh, thanks to the gradient term in the, in the energy uh, of the gradient elasticity model. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.